What is going on guys? Today we don't actually do anything that is being reflected in the game unfortunately, so it's still the same exact game. However, we do lay down some very good base for us to start spawning objects in the next episode. So we now have a pooling system for objects we don't spawn, we now have a level manager that's going to help us. We, we now have definition for all the pieces we're going to be spawning, we now have definitions for all the segment we're going to be spawning. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So this episode is all about starting the, um, the generation system, so the whole level generation system. This one is quite a complicated one, so we're gonna go slowly with the very first step, and it is to spawn, well not even to spawn, it is to define what is every single piece you're going to see, and then I'm going to wrap all these pieces into something we'll call a segment. So just to like try to illustrate what we're, what, uh, we're trying to do, let's imagine that this thing over here would be a ramp, or you know, like a train. Uh, in Subway Surfer. This itself would be a piece. And now if we have three of them next to each other on all the three trails, this would be a segment. So a segment is basically something that engulfs the three lanes at the same time on, you know, the same, um, we could say z-axis, but it could go a little bit further or before that. So this is what we're going to be doing today. Let's go ahead and start by cleaning this up over here. We still left a little bit of um, trash in our root folders. Let's move that to animations. For some reason I can't. Oh, because I have the old coin in here. Let's see, that is the old one. Which one is the old one? This is the old one. Let me remove it. And here we go. So we're starting off clean now. Let's head over to, uh, let's head over to the script folder. Let's create a... Um, we're going to start with the piece. So a normal piece, right? This is going to be a very small script. I'll just get rid of that. Get rid of this as well. And do we want to have mono behavior? We, yeah, actually, we do want to have mono behavior in this case. So what I'd like to do is, before we do anything here, um, I'm going to create an enum at the top. So public enum piece type. We have different type of piece in Subway Surfer, and those are uh, first nothing. So that's going to be helpful uh, helpful for us in, in the future. And then we have ramp. Let's put that on zero. We have long block, which are basically the trains in Subway Surfer. We have a jump, which is, uh, and this is going to be like something on the floor, something you have to jump over. And then we have the slides, so that is something you slide beneath, of course. So every single piece is going to have a public piece type. Oops. Just to know which kind of, you know, which kind of piece it is for. And then just beneath it, I'll use a public int visual index, in case we have multiple visual index and we'd like to swap in between like a random number. So let's say this time you have this type of ramp, and the other time you have another type of ramp. Alright, so this is all we need for the piece, let's move over to the segment now. Segment is going to be a little bit more complicated of course, because we need to keep track of a lot of value in this thing. I'll create a script called segment. Let's open it up. And in this one we are going to start by having a public int seg id in fact i'd like to make this a property seg id set get it is now a property that we might actually set from outside when we load all the prefabs uh, and then we have a public boolean transition again i'd like to set that on actually no this one has to stay like this um okay so let me explain real quick what a transition segment is going to be um in subway surfer sometime you have like a moment of of breathing, you have a moment of like a little, you know, space on all three lanes where you can just move around. And those are what we're going to call transition segment in our case. So we might want to be spawning like four or if in between four and seven normal segment with stuff on it, and then give some breathing room to the player with that transition segment. Of course, we need to keep track of that, so we put a public boolean here, um, another public uh, public in <coughs> saying the length. So how long is the segment? And then three other ints, one called begin y1, begin y2, and you guessed it, begin y3. And I'll just keep on writing this, so um, I'll explain after that. We have also n y1, n y2, and n y3. So these are the actual level in on the y-axis where you actually begin the segment and where you end the segment on every single lane. Uh, we could have put that in a vector 3 if you liked it more, but for clarity purpose, I just made 3 ends. 
Um, okay, so why is this useful? This is going to be useful so when we spam our blocks, we actually have always a way to get out of trouble. We always have a way of escaping, you know, this this whole level we made. Um, just imagine we, we start off, we start off by spawning three trains in front of us on three lanes, and, you know, there's no way to get on there if we don't have a ramp. All right, now the next step is going to be to keep track of all the pieces we have. So pieces, array, and pieces. So the way we're going to be making our prefab is simply we're going to be making segments and beneath those segments are going to be pieces. Now, you know, I don't want to be doing it for every single one of the, uh, the segments since we might have a lot. So I'll just do it in an awake through code. We'll say pieces equal to game object. And I just ran out of IntelliSense, so I'll have to uh, type that manually. Get components in children type of pieces. And let me quickly reset this thing. Here we go. Alright, good. So we're back with IntelliSense this time. Um, once we have all of this, we're going to be creating some other function for utility purpose. So uh, we, we're going to have a level manager later on that is going to spawn those segments and also despawn them so we don't overload our memory over time. So let's actually create them function. We have a public void spawn. And let's also lay down the other one since we're at it. Public void despawn. So what we have to do at this point, simply do a game object set, act, set active of the whole segment. So let's put that on true. Now you guessed it, we're going to do the same thing in the despawn, but we're going to do false here. And then there's going to be more than that a little bit later on. But first, let's try and make this work. Okay, so bear with me because the next part is where it gets a little bit complicated. We have um, segments and we also have pieces. Technically, it would be super simple. You'd have pieces inside of the segment and then you just spawn segments. But we're going to go a little bit further than that because we want to be having something that uh, makes the game a little bit more random, basically. And what I'm saying by that is, in case we do have some pieces, let's actually lay down some real pieces here so we can have a better uh, look. So let's say that's a train, so that's block number one, two, and then three, on the three lanes like that. Um, let's say that is a segment right here. Those are all pieces, and then as a whole, they are a segment. What I'd like to do is actually cut the whole part where this is only a piece. I don't want this to be a piece, actually. I want this to be some kind of, well, I, I call it a piece spawner. So what that piece spawner is going to do is going to give me a window in between these two things here, in between the segment and the piece, to actually have a random effect on which kind of piece we want. So we know that this one is going to be a block in the end. But what if it is actually a block that looks like this? A log instead. This is what the piece spawner is going to let us do, basically. It's going to let us actually use this instead of using this. It's going to give us a random element on which one do we actually want to be using. Now, of course, it's going to be random. We don't really choose, but we can put as many pieces of type long block in this actual uh, piece spawner as much as we want. So this is what we're going to be doing right here, and this is why it's going to get a little bit complicated. Hopefully, you don't get lost in that, but let's right-click on script, create a new one, call it the piece spawner. And just assume that this is going to be our piece from now on. So this is the one we're going to be spawning. All right, so we're going to need a piece type at first. To know, of course, which type are we spawning. Because if we spawn a ramp where there should be a long block, that's not going to help us at all. And then I'll have a um, private piece, current piece, because we need to keep track of it. This is also going to help us for the whole pooling mechanic we're going to put behind that so we don't always spawn um, new pieces all the time. Now in the spawn, what I'll be doing is I'll say current piece is equal to get me a new piece from the pool. Obviously it's something we don't have just yet, but let's just assume it's there and then we'll say current piece, game object, set active, we set it to true. And then current piece, transform, set parent is going to be our parent. So transform and then we don't want to be maintaining the world position. So what we do when we spawn is we just grab one of the random pieces from the pool. So it's already been spawned before or if we don't actually have one ready, we can spawn a new one. That is what the function is going to be doing right here. And then we just set it as our own under our own piece spawner. And then there it is. 
Now in the despawn function, all we really have to do is say current piece game object set active is going to be equal to false. This way it can go back in the pool. Alright, so we do have a bunch of definition right here, but nothing is there to, um, you know, put them all together. And this is why we're going to need a level manager, something that is going to generate the whole level. So um, let's go ahead and create that right away. So create level manager. We have four new scripts today, it's a bunch of scripts. Most of them are really small, but this one is not going to be very small. It's going to be quite big, actually. And um, this is something I'll, I'll be splitting with the next episode as well, because it is quite a big one. Let's start by just making it a public static instance. So public static level manager instance set and get. And um, choo -choo -choo -choo. let's create a section for the whole level spawning mechanic. And there is quite a lot of floats in here. I think I'll be keeping that for the next episode, the whole spawning part. I like to actually just uh, make the pooling mechanic right now. So for the whole pooling mechanic, I'll need a list of every single one of our type of objects. So let's go and call that list of objects. And uh, well, list, list of pieces actually. Pieces. And then I'll create a public list for everything. So public list. Um, we're going to start with, well, they're all list of pieces, but the first one is going to be ramps. Let's create a new list for that. Copy that. Paste, paste, paste. And actually paste only four times. Second one is going to be long blocks. I'll put S in them, so I'll make them plural. Um, jumps and then slides. I'm also going to keep track of which one are currently active right now. So public list, same thing actually. Public list and this one is going to be only pieces. That, those are, are going to be the um, all the pieces in the pool. Okay, so we have a list of pretty much everything at this point. We can go ahead and fill them uh, manually. They're all public, so we're going to have to do a little bit of manual work in there. But um, that's not going to be too much of a big deal. Now, just to make sure we can wrap up what we actually started creating in the piece spawner, I'm going to create a public function called it public um, get piece. So make sure this one returns a piece. We're going to take in the piece type. So let's call that PT and then the visual index we want. Okay. In here, we're going to be looking through the pool by doing, by first declaring a piece. Let's call it P. And then we'll be looking through the actual pool. So the active pool. Look for something that first is inactive and second um, has the same visual index. So let's do. So let's do a delegate right here. If we find a piece, so it's going to scroll through all the pieces. If it finds something with the type equal equal to PT, then we're going to have a match. But then, you know, if we find something that has the same time, that's not enough because it might be used somewhere else, um, currently active in another segment. So we have to look first, is it the same uh, type? And then second, is it the, the same visual index? So x.visualindex is equal to visual index, the one we receive in parameter. And then finally, because that's not enough again, we have to make sure it is not being active right now. So x game object active self make sure you put the negative sign right in front of it. So if we find if we do find an object that has all of these, so it's an object that has the same type, same visual index, and it's not currently active, we're going to go ahead and just return this object. So this is the one we'll be using. Let's do a return p and then in our spawn function we of course take this and set it active. This way it can't be used um, later on because this is not going to be matching until of course we despawn the object. Now if we don't find anything, if p is equal equal to null, that means we're going to have to spawn it. So this is what the pool mechanic is about. We're going to be looking through our pool of object and if we don't find it in there, we have to spawn it and then put it in the pool so we can reuse it later. So in case we don't have one, let's go ahead and create a new one by saying game object geo and then we'll say if we have a piece type of type say ramp, let's grab the one from Ramps. Oops. Add visual index dot game object. Else, if we have a piece type of piece type. Oops. Dot long block. Then same thing. Grab one from the long block, and you get this whole jazz. So it's going to be the same exact thing for all the other ones. Next up is jump, I believe. Yep. 
Oops. Okay, I'm messing up with my manual work. This is jumps. Dot game object and then else if again. Make sure you put else if so we don't actually check um, all the other statement in case you have like a ramp. Let's make sure it doesn't check all the other ones. And here we go. So once we grab a reference to that thing in the prefab, um, to the proper object in the prefab, we have to go ahead and instantiate it because it's still it's in the prefab, it's not in the scene anywhere. We have to instantiate that game object. Uh, and then, wait, what is that? Use of unassign. It's actually a sign, isn't it? Oh, since we're going through if and else if statement, it might actually not be a sign. So we're going to say it's equal to null, just to make sure this compiler is not mad at us. Next up, we have p is equal to get component type of piece, because we're going to be grabbing the piece on top of that object. And then we'll make sure to add it to the pool. So piece is at add piece. And just like this, we just created our nice little pool mechanic. Of course, we can't see it right now in the game. We can't actually spawn it. We don't have the whole code behind it. But we have a very good chunk. And let's go back in our P spawner real quick and actually fix this line over here. So what we're going to say is current piece is going to be equal to level manager instance get piece. And then we'll do type and zero for now. Later on, we can actually change this number in between something random. So um, say whatever amount of ramps we have and then the maximum amount of ramp we have. So we can have a random number in between these two and eventually have a fully random spawning system. All right, guys, so I know this was a little bit painful. We don't have anything uh, new in the actual game in terms of gameplay, but we did lay down some very good base for us to create the spawning system, which is something we'll be able to do starting next episode. But until then, we're going to be ending this episode. We now have a polling system for object that we're not even spawning. Amazing stuff. Check out the Patreon page, check out the Discord chat, all of these to help us out making more tutorials. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.